paid attention to these elections because they, they do need to carry a lot of weight in, uh, in, in our lives. So, uh, Mike Sundin was born up in Kuchajin County, again, there is not a dairy farm, and uh, uh, learned a lot of, a lot of uh, work values uh, uh, on that farm. And uh, after, after graduating from high school, I went to Atascade Community College for a couple of years, and I was lured down to this area by women at work. and. Uh, Ended up uh, married a gal from Cloquet and uh, raising a family here and uh, made this area my home. Uh, recently, uh, recently, 12 years ago, I moved out to Aspen and uh, uh, enjoying life out there. Uh, contrary to what Bill says, I, you know, we, don't, we have more opportunity than we have problems here in the uh, state of Minnesota. And uh, through my political connections uh, with people I've helped get elected in the past, Number of years, uh, I'd like to contribute more to that uh, and make this state or restore the state to its uh, previous uh, stature in the, in the country. Uh, we've got a strong uh, education system. Uh, benefited by that, my children benefited by it. Uh, my two boys, uh, one was a career military uh, <coughs> commissioned officer, the other one is a finishing degree at Lake Superior College. So there he is. When they uh, came out of the public school system here in Colquay, uh, that gave them the, the backbone to continue on. So I'd like to serve this state uh, and uh, return uh, return to its previous state, and uh, uh, I'm willing to do so. Like I said, I'm willing to go to St. Paul and uh, work with people that I helped get elected down there. Actually, a couple generations. Yeah. So, uh, I'm looking forward to working in St. Paul for the people in this state. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Jim Putnam? Well, once again, I'd like to thank everybody that's here and everybody who's put this on. This is a chance for all the people that are staying on the radio and who watch this later on tape to see the candidates one on one and see what they views are, how they communicate with the people. I, I can go back to Roots. Roots First Lake, my grandpa Aaron basically was on the town board back there and one of his good friends was born in Chimoweski. However, I've lived in Cloquet area, Carlton County area, for at least 70 years, and my dad to a team, and he's getting not too old to you. So, it, what it amounts to is that I want to serve the people here, and that's what I'm about, and I can testify to that because in year, year 206, the bank wanted our Eagles Club more than we did. They took it. We had to form a, form a Charter to keep us going. I became the president of a little club that does not have a bar or a restaurant that's giving away over thirty thousand dollars in charities. We work hard at it, and that's what I'm about. I, I lived in both Esco. I lived there for eight years, quite a long time ago. I and a couple other good people are responsible for having started the youth baseball program, the youth girls softball, and the soccer program. In fact, one day I saw my son hit a ball at church and he was six years old. I called up a good friend of mine, Patty Murdo, and I said, do we have baseball in this town? He said, no. So that's when it started. And what I have done is work with people and that's what I'm doing. Now, I'm classifying myself as an independent Republican because one thing, I will cross the party and the party lines and the aisles to make sure that things get accomplished. That's the way I am, and that's the way it's going to be from here on. And I need everybody's support. And I've lived in this town for a long time, and most people know me. And that's what I, what I do, is help people. Thank you very much, Jim. Um, I want to uh, let our audience know that we have invited uh, Corey Philcock, who is the independent candidate for uh, Legislative Seat 11A. And Corey Philcock has, has not uh, uh, to show up today, so we will um, conduct the, uh, the debates without him. Um, each candidate will be uh, given two minutes to answer a question, and uh, you don't have to take the full two minutes if you don't want to. Um, but, um, and then we will just rotate from uh, each person who gives different questions. So we'll begin <coughs> with, um, with the economy in the state of Minnesota. <coughs> Um, the number one issue in probably the nation and Minnesota is the economy. And uh, I would ask you, what will you do to promote a growing economy? 
economy and provide jobs for their employees. Tony, I start by asking. Well, you know, um, I think that the state's role in making sure that we have a vital economy is critical. Um, looking back at Minnesota's history, the way we've done that always is through um, strategic investments in education, making certain that we have the skilled workforce that, that our employers need in order to compete in this global economy. Um, and I think that that's really uh, the, the way forward. And um, there's, there's several other ways that we can and should engage ourselves. I mean, um, our, four, uh, our predecessors in office um, gave us, we inherited an infrastructure that was phenomenal. Uh, uh, an interstate system, uh, a, a highway system, um, trains, uh, electric grid. They gave it, they, we inherited all of this 95% um, complete and debt free. And we used this. We used it very well and thrived for many, many years. And during those years, we cut taxes and, and, and underfunded our critical infrastructure needs. I think that it's important that we recognize that the challenges meeting our kids and our grandkids are going to be different than those that we met. And we have a different energy future that we need to be cognizant of. We have a different transportation future that we need to be cognizant of. I think with the recent flooding here in Carleton County, um, I, we have to think long and hard about uh, the infrastructure we use for water and uh, wastewater and clean water and, um, and agricultural uses of water. Um, all of these are critical needs that, that the state needs to make sure that we uh, um, ensure we provide the funding necessary to, to make that infrastructure and to have the education that we need. And truthfully, um, just about I don't know, three or four weeks ago, the Minnesota um, Chamber of Commerce came out with their um, uh, uh, survey, and 80% of Minnesota companies thought Minnesota was doing very well and are looking forward to the future. I think we're doing a lot of things well. Thank you, Tony. Bill, would you like to repeat the question? On the educate thing. Well, jobs are so key to our economy in this state, and especially in this District 11 that we have here. We have a lot of small businesses that have left our district and or are struggling because they abide by the same rules and regulations that most of them do as some of the larger businesses that are in the Twin Cities metropolitan area. And it has affected a lot of the rural businesses negatively. And they may have less employees or a whole different work environment out there that they have to abide by the same rules. So I would really strive to make sure that the rules are fair across the board, and if there are differences between rural Minnesota and greater Minnesota than are in the Twin Cities, that the regulations affect that. 3M used to be in Pine City, they're gone. General Andrews Tree Farm, which has been a mainstay in this area for a really long time, just down the road that Willow River is closing next year. We're, we're continuing to lose more opportunities. Um, another teacher colleague of mine this past year when we were discussing jobs and job creation, said that the only way, now this is not mine, this is a colleague of mine, said the only way that government can help create jobs is to grow the government and hire more people himself for the government. And I don't agree with that. I want to make sure that we don't have over regulation for small business. I want to make sure they're not being overtaxed. If they're not, they can hire more employees. I know that a bunch of them have laid off employees around Pine City, and I want to make sure that they don't do that. And I want to make sure that small businesses can thrive, and I want to, that's why I'm going to be working mostly with jobs in this area, improve the economy, and that's going to ultimately affect our state budgeting. Thank you very much, Bill. Mike? When you talk about the jobs, we should also talk about the quality of jobs. Uh, in northeastern Minnesota, we, we do have a a pretty good standard uh, income in, in this part of the state, and I think we should try to preserve that. You know, there's a, there's a lot of development fighting against uh, the interest of maybe tourism, and uh, we have to balance that and make sure that, uh, you know, heavy industry and uh, the mining interests and, uh, and, those, and the transportation interests are addressed, and, and those are quality jobs that uh, are, you know, on the horizon, and we have to make sure we do that right. Okay, uh, when it comes down to some of the commerce that goes on in the 